by the way, the band sounds great today. <laughs> Just they do. Oh man, they're right on. Thanks, Doc. Yep, they are. The, the band, band is, is tight today. Yeah, tight huh. today. All right, we got some special guests here today. I'm Hayes. Here's Fletch. There's another Fletch, <laughs> and there's a Flug. Fantastic. So we got Hayes, Fletch, Fletch, and Flug. Yeah, nice. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah. Thanks for breaking away from your busy schedules. <laughs> yeah. This is the this is the AFib episode. We're, yeah. We're talking all things AFib. Right uh, on, man. Atrial fibrillation for did I did I say that right? We do have a doctor on staff. Yes. Although yeah. we want to make it very yeah, clear disclaimer. that there is no medical advice being given here. And, and I mean that in all sincerity. We don't yeah. want to yeah. claim that we know anything about anything. You're an ear, nose, and yeah. throat guy. <laughs> but I've had atrial fib. Right. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. All of us. All four have we had are all, some form of an episode, and uh, it's, I mean, it's important to share those experiences. I, I, I totally. And what do we share in common? It's obvious, I think, for anybody that's watching on YouTube. We're old guys. Primarily, right? And I know well, these, this. These guys are older. Right. Way yeah. older. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easy. Mark, Mark's actually six hours older than me. That's, yeah. that's, that's true. Same birth date. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Our, our, our moms were in the same OB ward yeah. together yeah. At Is North, that right? in North Omaha at Emmanuel. Yep. Well, where were, you, where were you born? I was born at Methodist. Okay. You. Uh, the old Methodist okay. hospital. Yeah. Yeah, a month before you guys, apparently, because I'm October. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. So we're the same exact age. I'm the old yeah. man. You guys are exactly the same age, and you're 61. I'll be 61 in a month. 61 in a month. Oh, shit, I need to get you some. I there, said it. Sorry, go. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Sincerely, I apologize. There we go. There we go. Um, I just need to get you a gift, Well, apparently. yeah. While you're I'll in t- be here all week. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hey, wait, quick story. So yeah. uh, John, a uh, great basketball player. Fan- with, well, this is a table full of two great hey, basketball don't players. Don't interrupt him. I gave him a card to read about me. <laughs> <laughs> John John went to uh, to Valley View, you know the the dominant Valley oh, View I junior high. I went to Arbor Heights. Uh, this is ninth grade. I've told this story a hundred times to you, but um, we um, were playing basketball and, and uh, playing against Valley View, and I had, was I think the uh, last scorer on the team for the year. I had like <laughs> three points total for the whole season. I get in the game and I, I get a crucial rebound, mm. and I have a, a tendency to panic when, <laughs> when, when you touch the, the ball. When the ball touches, the <laughs> and I get the ball and I do one of these things and I hear Haysbrook, <laughs> and I turn and I shovel the ball to whoever said Haysbrook, and it was Flug. <laughs> And he puts in the bucket right away. And they win. And, and they win, and he laughs all the way down the yeah. court. Just, uh, I don't necessarily remember that, but I do remember lining up in football. <laughs> and then Hayes Brooks across the line from me. And he goes, hey, John. <laughs> and here we're all nervous about this big showdown with Arbor Heights. The big rivalry. Yeah, and, and I just remember he had the, the Kansas City Chiefs face mask, and I was thinking, mm-hmm. where do you get the cool face mask? Right. He had the double bar one. The rich well, kids. Yeah. Go to Westbrook. You want to see yeah, some yeah. face masks. <laughs> yeah, all right. right. Sorry, I digress. Yeah. No, no, that's fantastic. Man, those are point great is, we've known each other a long time. A long time. I do want to make one announcement before we get started with the information. Um, Bike with Mike, a Check. fundraiser specifically for mental health, uh, is taking place tomorrow. Uh, what's the name of the Wabash, Wabash Trace? Wabash Trace, yep. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Wabash Trace. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, this is something that you and I have been doing for quite a while. It's the Cudillac family has yep. sponsored this, and you're good friends with the yep. Cudillacs. Love yep. it. Love uh, it. it is a fundraiser for mental health. They've added a new family. Yep, the Horgan family. Horgan oh, family. Okay. They are also participating oh, this nice. year. Um, so if you are interested in supporting mental health issues, if you want to just contribute some money, if you want to come and ride, we'll be there tomorrow. It's a great event. What yep. time? Uh, it starts at registration starts at nine at the trailhead of the Wabash Trace Trailhead over in yep. Council Bluffs. Yep. What, what, date, ride, what date? Because I don't know. Uh, it's tomorrow, it. June first. June. 1st. It is June first, and so we'll ride for about an hour. We stop at uh, what's the place it's in called? In Mineola. Stop down in Mineola at Toby Jack's, eat some tacos, and then hop back on a bike right. and, and ride ten miles back. What, uh, what's the website? My, bike with Mike. Uh, it's called Bike with Mike. Day. MikeWithMikeDay.com. Yeah. MikeWithMikeDay.com. This is, so go there and, and yeah. you know, and give some – I can't read it on Fletch's screen because yeah, the screen is cracked. It's an Android. 
Yes, but yeah, this is a like great a event. Seventh yes. graders. Fall. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife just gave it to me as okay. my first one. So. Mike with Mike. Day.com. Yeah, this is All really right. fantastic. This is awesome. worthy of your time and money. So Definitely. check it out. Cool. Um, let's get on to AFib, man. Let's so we have come to realize, I think, that we each have AFib. Dave and I are it's kind of a familial thing with us because it's been hereditary. And then when I first I mentioned it to John, and John mentioned that he had it, and then you shared with me recently that you yeah. have experienced it. So mm-hmm. I, I think this is something that's you are a doctor. Yeah, very common. It's very common, I, is it I, not? More than you realize. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, like I, I was reading something about maybe 12 million people okay. have AFib, something, or that's what they estimate, perhaps, and I'm sure it goes underreported, probably. Right. But this is a common thing, so I, I, we're not getting medical here, but can you just talk about what yeah. AFib is, basically? Yeah. Um, well, your heart, obviously, is a pumping chamber to move blood, and so four chambers, the two top chambers are are the receiving area of of the heart they receive blood and the two bottom chambers are pumping it out to the lungs into the body and so there's an amazing electrical system that goes through the heart to keep the heart moving in a rhythm uh, because the pump function doesn't work if it doesn't move coordinated Mm -hmm. and so if you take a single cell from the from the heart in in a lab and put it in a gel dish it will pump on its own a single cell or a group of cells will just pump on their own, but that would not be coordinated. You know? And so when the top of your heart has a little pacemaker called the sinus node, okay. um, based on the sine wave that it prints out on an EKG, I believe. And, um, and so that's kind of the, the, the pacemaker the, that sets the tone or the rhythm for your heart. Mm-hmm. And so if that in atrial fib, there's a problem with the rhythm because the, the little circuits that travel through from the superior part of your heart to the lower part of your heart get un- incoordinated or, or the signal is disrupted for some multiple reasons. And so, you, you, you know, the top of the heart has to be squeezing to squirt blood into the bottom of the heart, which is the big muscular part of your heart, and then it, it will squeeze hard and put it out to your body. And so it's supposed to be top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And if it starts, and the fibrillation means that the, the circuits aren't working very well, so it just starts to kind of wiggle or, or tremor. And then um, kind of like if, if you've ever had a cramp, you know, you watch the, the muscles in your mm-hmm. arm or twitching your or leg or calf mm-hmm. and just kind of like twitching like that. That's what's called. And so you no longer have that pump function mm-hmm. of the top part. Well, the top, the, the bottom, the ventricles will still, they will still pump, but they don't have rhythm. They're, they're like the white guy on the dance floor. They don't have any rhythm. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you've lost, you've, you've lost the, the, the nice rhythm. The coordination yeah, is and gone. And so now the bottom part will pump on its own, but it, it will pump one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, or maybe just go real fast, you know, mm-hmm. over 100 beats per minute. And so you've lost the efficiency of your heart. And so now you're still pumping blood. But the efficiency, the pump mm-hmm. function has gone so far down that your blood pressure is typically going down and then mm-hmm. back up and then down back up. And it is a you'll, weird sensation. You'll, feel, so you'll kind of feel it, mm-hmm. and it can make you lightheaded, and it can cause a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Well, so what, what's your story, man? I mean, this is something that's relatively new to you. We've all, we're have we all going to share, share our experience. but Yeah, it was new to me because what, uh, I, I didn't even know what it was. What did you experience? And um, I had worked out one morning, and... Um, did my sauna, did my cold plunge, did yeah. my whole thing. I was walking upstairs and kind of saw stars a little bit, and I thought, well, what? that's weird. And then I just got lightheaded um, and had to stop and um, stood there for a bit and almost thought I was going to faint. Mm. But I felt the fluttering in my heart and couldn't catch my breath. And then all of a sudden my Apple Watch said, did it? You know, you're mm-hmm. in AFib. No shit. And I thought, what? <laughs> yeah. I said, what? You know, I, I don't even know what this feature was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so then I looked up all the little things I could do, and I sat down, and I was like, right, oh, I could actually measure this. It's like a little e- ECG. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I did that, and it said AFib. Wow. And of course, then I'm Googling, well, what is AFib? I don't even understand this. Mm-hmm. And I did it like 20, 30 different times, and it was just consistent. And I had it for like three, four hours. And so I called my doctor and I said, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to send you these readings. He goes, damn, you better get in here. Let's take a look. So he straps me up and does the, the measurement. 
He said, yeah, you've got uh, AFib. Now, he said, here's the deal. I mean, typically someone who's in pretty good shape and, and takes care of themselves, this will correct itself, but we'll give you Xeralto. Z- is that the medicine? I think yeah. uh, that's a blood thinner. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'm just going to give you that first because we're going to thin the blood out. We don't want you to throw a clot, which I didn't know mm-hmm. was a right. concern. Oh, that's a big concern, big. I think. Yeah. And then let's get you into the, the, the heart doctor. Well, they can't see me till July. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of an urgent thing. Yeah. <laughs> you would think. Like I was thinking, oh, let's get you in in an hour. Right, right. I'm just driving <laughs> right over there. Or you're taking me so by ambulance I go? or something. You know, so I, I don't know. I so still, have you not seen the cardiologist yet? I, I have yet? not seen the cardiologist Are yet. you still so in AFib? Your watch isn't no, open right now. It, it just, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. It stopped. Yeah, okay. it just stopped. Is that your only experience that you're aware of? Uh, I had one other, but it was uh, because I was severely dehydrated. Mm-hmm. And I just attribute it to that. But mm-hmm. now, it turns out, I'm looking back at my dad's history. He's got a little bit of heart, it, uh, it, something, nothing like this. And my grandfather died of a heart attack. So I'm mm. kind of like, okay. This may be something to pay attention to. Yeah. And so that's why I brought it up to you. I was like, God, I had this weirdest thing this morning. And you said, oh, I've had this my whole life. Yeah, for quite a long time. And you've lived with it. Uh, just, I've had it. Well, my, I'm going to have defer to Dave and like, hear his story. But my first episode was when I... It's 50 in 2010, Jeez. and I was hospitalized for it, but we can talk about that. When, when was your first experience? 50. At 50. At and 50. I knew it was coming because Doug had had it, and he told me, when you turn 50, you're going to get AFib. Serious. Yeah. And our, our mother has it. Our, our, our uncle has it, had yeah. it. Jack so, had it. And mine was a little different. I mean, huh. I had it, and I knew what was going on, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to go to bed see if it corrects itself. So I went to sleep, got up the next morning, and it had not corrected itself. So huh. um, went to the hospital, sat in the hospital for a day, waiting for it to go back, or they were going to do the cardio version. And eventually it went back. I thought, okay, went home, um, called a basketball buddy of mine who at the time sold, like, heart something. I don't mm-hmm. know. He hooked me up with a cardiologist. Okay. So I went and saw the cardiologist, but I had it two more times the same month. Mm. So the cardiologist said, well, this is a bigger deal. Mm. We're going to put you on these meds. I don't, yeah, I don't know what they were. I don't remember. But the, you had to take them every eight hours like clockwork. Oh, wow. And it was just such a pain. I remember you were setting your alarm to get up and take yeah, that first dose. Yeah, I was dose. getting up early mm. to take the first dose. And it was such a pain that I went back and we talked about the ablation, which I had done, which was the greatest thing I ever did. Really? Absolutely. Um, can and we you can, explain what that is? So they go in through your groin, like up inside your heart. Uh-huh. And I, I believe, I don't know because I was out, but I think they put you into AFib and find those places in your heart that are triggering those pulses that, are, were incorrect, trying oh, to get you back mm-hmm. into sinus rhythm. Oh. So, and then they freeze them. So it was, I think it's a three, four hour procedure maybe, but it was the greatest thing I ever did because I didn't want to take the pills. It was kind of a hassle and, you know, knock on wood, it'll be 11 years. I've never been back in AFIP. Nothing. I have other heart issues that we can talk about <laughs> oh, that wow. I'm going to we see should. someone in sure. July. Wow. Yeah, we should. Absolutely. But, wow. But the ablation, for me, I've had friends, lots of basketball friends who've had this, and some have had to go back in for a second ablation. They mm. didn't get it all corrected. But for me. I mean, now, you work out. You take care of yourself. I try you're, to, yeah. Because I know, Johnny, you're, you're pretty severe into that, too. Mm-hmm. It, and, and it's frustrating if you have this condition that you do all the things from a nutrition standpoint, taking care of yourself. Uh, working out, and then you got this thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and has it impacted that at all for you? Um, I'm just – the impact on me is just hyper aware of what my heart's doing mm-hmm. all the time. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, but I had it at 50. I haven't had a drink since I was 50. I haven't had mm-hmm. caffeine since I was 50. No I haven't kidding. had a soda since I was 50. I mean, I, I lost 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got way too thin. I mean, I probably went overboard. Uh-huh. Um, but these are the common triggers, right? These are the common triggers. I mean, I went through wow. Google mm-hmm. on what are the triggers and just stopped doing everything on the list, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I don't they, know they can't really tell you what your specific trigger is. Right. So you're kind of trying to eliminate the triggers. I, I was. Mm. And still am. I mean, mm-hmm. I, but I just, 
you know, you spend three nights in the hospital feeling yeah. crappy like yeah. you do when you're in it, waiting for it to go away. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you'll try about anything mm-hmm. to see if you can fix it yourself. And that's what I've been doing. Good for you. So a combination of that and eliminating some things. What did you increase? You know, was it more fluids? Was it? Uh, you know, I drink a ton of water. Yeah. Um, I try to eat okay. I mean, some things, and John and I have talked, like super cold drinks sometimes will set my heart off, huh. um, super spicy things. So I try to be, I mean, you can't cut all that out of yeah, your yeah, life, yeah. but I try to be aware of, mm-hmm. yeah, this, mm-hmm. you know, this might be a little dicey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, my lifestyle has certainly changed probably for the better. For the better, right. The truthfully. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I just... So, know, this is genetic? This is something in your family? It's in our family. You guys yeah. just said, okay, 50 is when it starts, or... Well, that's when it hit me. That's when it hit me. And him. I just suggested it, and I, our mother has dealt with it. She has a pacemaker. I'm not going to yeah. share all of her medical history, of course, <laughs> but she did have a pacemaker, and our Uncle Jack, her brother, had it. Huh. And we have, on our side, the Fletch side of the family, there's a lot of heart issues. So, there is some concern. I mean, we are both... We have exceeded the lifespan of our father and our grandfather, so wow, is that right? we are by a long shot. Yeah, we are much older than our predecessors. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we're kind of you know, I mean, it's kind of an interesting challenge. What mm-hmm. am I going to do about this? You know, yeah. I mean, you don't want to go through it again if you don't have to. Right. What about you, man? I mean, when you when I mentioned it to you, you'd already experienced it. You were familiar. Yeah. So and when did it happen to you? I think you know sometimes it scares you. And if it scares you into lifestyle changes that needed to be done anyway, then great, use it that yeah, way. That's probably <laughs> for good. sure. Because right. as a physician, sometimes we'll do that. It's like, hey, you know what? You better probably quit smoking. You better start, you know. All <laughs> right. Start. Absolutely. And, so, um, and, and those things do contribute. But I think people are more prone to this type of thing as we get older. It's not like a – I don't think there's a genetic component to it as far as I know. But okay. I think as you get older, you know, just like things start to kind of break down. We have less functioning neurons. We have our, you know, we get osteoporosis. All mm-hmm. these things start to happen, and your heart can start having issues because it's such a complex. I mean, there's so many complex organisms, you know, mm-hmm. our organ systems going on. That, um, But I think I, ischemic heart disease, you know, where you're, you're, the blood vessels to the heart aren't bringing enough oxygen to the heart muscle itself. That can be related to atrial fib, but that's not usually, I don't think that's usually the usual, the, the most common one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's like rhythm problems are 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 a kind of a different thing. Okay. And so, um, like in me, I was out digging in the yard, hot day. Came in, had a cold glass of orange juice, and then one of my daughters came and you know fell asleep on my chest. And I remember thinking, oh, "Get off me!" You know, this is mm-hmm. right. this is really I'm feeling it. And then and it wasn't pain, but it was like I felt like I just got done running a race. You know, it's mm-hmm. like. Wow, I'm kind of uncomfortable. This is sort of like yeah, I feel when I just got done working out, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and then I thought, oh, I got atrial fib, you know, because mm. I, my grandma had had atrial fib, never treated it. She lived to be 101. Wow, you know, so you don't necessarily die from atrial fib, but the, the main thing is you can develop a clot because if if you know the upper chambers, if they're just sitting there moving like this, blood's not really emptying very efficiently because it needs to squeeze and then really fill up those ventricles and then squeeze it back out. So if it's not getting that, they call it the atrial kick, you know, where it Mm -hmm. really squeezes. And so if the blood's sitting there, well, what does blood do if it doesn't move? It just starts to coagulate, right? Yeah. And so there's kind of a specific part of one of the, one of the top chambers that tends to kind of collect blood in there. Mm -hmm. And so that will make a clot then. And so, but after a while, maybe a little piece of that clot will kick off into the circulation and get pumped out and go to your brain you know, or the circulation gets smaller there, right. and then suddenly you got a stroke, right? Or into your lung, and you get a pulmonary embolism, mm. and so those are the major dangerous things, and those don't usually happen, and but they they do take it seriously. Like, like I don't think you have to be in a huge hurry to see a cardiologist. Your doctor was right. She's like, oh, let's just make sure we don't have a catastrophe here, right? And then when you have time, because because most of it's going to be, you know, again, you don't have a whole lot of risk factors to change. Mm-hmm. And it's not really a genetic thing, okay. uh, but I, I think caffeine was the one. Like I can't even now, if I forget and have a Coke or even a cold drink, if I've been like, or if I go out and run when it's cold out and I didn't warm up enough, I'll flip into atrial fib. Really? Okay. And then it's like, oh, dang it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I'm an atrial fib. 
And so, and I what just, do you do then? Well, I don't. I do things that I, you know, the general person I shouldn't be recommending. Right, you're not recommending these right. things. What but do I, you do? I notice. Well, like sometimes coughing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like giving yourself a, you know, precordial thud will make it like, oh, there it goes. No, now it's back in. Mm-hmm. Or, um, I'll get on the treadmill huh. and sprint. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And not that you should do this. But, no, but not my heart rate advice. goes up so fast then that it's forced to go back, in my opinion. And, again, mm-hmm. I don't want to tell anybody else to do that. But then it, it always just goes back into, si- they call it sinus rhythm. Mm-hmm. Right. If you get it going fast. That nice coordinated rhythm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that, man, because I listen huh. to these podcasts. I was been, So in preparation for this, I've been listening to a lot of AFib podcasts. And one of the doctors that was discussing this said that same thing. I have patients that will sprint to kick themselves out of AFib. He goes, and we do not recommend that. Yeah. But in these individuals, it works. I'm, I've never heard anyone say that in person, yeah. but wow. that's an interesting comment. But as a physician, you do things different. You know, you kind yeah. of like, I'm, it's like, I'll figure this out. You know, because yeah. one of my buddies, I saw him in the doctor's lounge. Hey, I, you know, he goes, oh, yeah, you're an atrial fib. And you, you gotta, we got to put Sean some medication. And then, uh, and I'm like, yeah, you know, and a blood thinner. Yeah. And at the time, I was playing hockey two nights a week. Right. I thought, Okay, I'm not playing hockey. I, I, I can't play hockey with this. It's like, let's call that plan B with the blood thinner. I'm going to see if I can figure this out. <laughs> right. And then sure, you know, it'll usually go away within yeah. a few hours or maybe overnight. Um, and the last, I just had it like three weeks ago. Did you? Because I had a Coke. Interesting. And, okay. I should, and, and a cold Coke. That. Yeah. And sure enough, it's like, <clears throat> how do I forget this? You know, it's like, and I flipped right into it. I then. think I called you or texted you one night for an ENT issue and you were at like a UNO hockey game or told me you were yeah. and drank a Coke. Yes. Went into it at the hockey game, yeah. kicked yourself cause you had the yeah. ice cold Coke. Oh. No kidding. So caffeine, it's just like, man, it's just irritability of the heart just kind of gets irritable. And then, Oh, now mm-hmm. I flipped it into a, mm-hmm. but you have a yeah. mechanism for getting yourself back out that typically works for you. Yeah. I've Generally. had it so often that I, it's like, I don't panic at all about okay. it because I don't want to take blood thinners and I don't want to take medication for it. Right. Um, and maybe if it gets to the point where it, I can't get out of it on my own. I will definitely have to do something. Right. You know, I could do an ablation, um, something like that. Right. And you get kind of tacky once in a while, which is, I, I, is that the reference for a higher Fast, heart rate? Yeah. So that's, so yeah, so that's the remaining heart thing I have is I will go into tachycardia. Mm. I've seen a doctor. We've narrowed it down to atrial flutter or SVTs. So it's kind super of, kind of, ventricular yeah. tachycardia, which is just basically saying the top part of your heart goes fast, yeah, irregular. So, I will just so it's be kind of the same family, and yeah. for no reason, my mm-hmm. heart will race like in the one forties, and it may go for two seconds, it may go for five minutes, mm-hmm. and I'm tried every time it happens now. For the last several months, I've got a little book where I'll write down what was I doing, mm-hmm. what yeah. did I eaten, mm-hmm. what did yeah. I drink, what triggered it, yeah. what mm-hmm. triggered it. But there, I can't find a way to make it stop. It mm-hmm. just kind of stops on its own, and you go right back into sinus rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what role does breathing play in, in this? Control it could be a lot. Breathing. Because the, the nerves yeah. that go to your heart also control you know, some of the mm-hmm. lung function, your mm-hmm. diaphragm, the, the vagus nerve. The vagus yeah. nerve, yeah. yeah, man. And so that's why I think I've just put it together. With like If I have a cold drink, that stimulates my esophagus, yep. which is right next to your heart. Mm-hmm. And so then that must do it, you know, and, or someone's sitting on me, you know, when yeah. the kids would sit on me, I was like, oh, I can't do this. You know, yeah, you got to get yeah. off. So I'm, it's flipping me into atrial fib. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. And then if I had caffeine before, it's like, okay, then I'm right. definitely, gonna you know, that's interesting, it. man. So I'll share some, so yes, it may not be a, apparent, but my trigger seems to be overeating. And I think it is a vagus nerve issue. I ate two boxes of wheat thins one night sitting on the couch, (laughs) and I kicked myself into AFib. Is this where we cut into the video of you eating (laughs) in the dark? I mean, there's crumbs on the couch. Yeah, and I'm I'm not saying that in jest. When I first had AFib in 2010, I was sitting at that little barbecue place off of 114th and Center. Yeah. You remember that? Just a little bit south of Center Street. That was that little one tucked back there barbecue place. I was having lunch with a colleague. I had a big mound of, like, mashed potatoes and hot beef and stuff, maybe four pounds of it, <laughs> going, for the, you know, going for the record, you know. And uh, I started getting this weird tunnel vision. I started getting um, a little sweaty. And I, could, I took my pulse, and it was really erratic. It wasn't yeah. fast, but it was like, bop, 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 yeah. bop, bop, bop. 
And I knew that that's not right. I mean, I took an anatomy class once, you know. I knew that wasn't right, so I excused myself. I said, hey, look, man, I got to go. And I drove over to Lakeside Emergency Room, and I'm waiting behind some lady that's talking about her bunions and stuff, you know. And I'm like, I don't mean to be rude, but I think I'm having a heart attack. And they just, you know, the oh. bell started going off, yeah. and they ran me into the back and AFib. Yeah. And, and I was in the hospital for three days. Really? What's that? Waiting yeah. to be, strange. waiting for it to convert or yeah. revert back into normal rhythm. Yeah. yeah. And they gave me meds and stuff. And Was that the trigger then? The, the food? I'm guessing for me, it is whatever that irritation to your vagus nerve is, yeah. that esophageal irritation. But I got cardioverted back into rhythm. And what happens in Vegas stays there. <laughs> That's exactly right. It, it appears to be for me. So they, they had to shock my heart back into rhythm, which yeah. is the cardioversion. So they did the transesophageal echo yeah. to make sure I didn't have clots in my atria. Uh, they give me propofol first, which I highly recommend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, they put you out. They do the echo to make sure there are no pools of blood in your atria. Then they shock it. Hmm. And it we went back right back into the rhythm, and now... I've had a few other episodes, but I've been able to control it with a, they gave me kind of a, a ryth, an antiarrhythmia medicine. And what does that do? That when I get into this arrhythmia, I can take this medicine, I lay down like you described, I kind of rest, and then it usually converts back yeah. in. And that's completely opposite of getting on a treadmill and sprinting. Complete yeah. opposite. Yeah. And I, I couldn't sprint anyway. That's not within my capabilities. That, but That wouldn't be recommended for, you know, the average person. And and I again I'm not recommending doing that. No 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 I I get it I'm just saying. But you're like a, but the, you're like a world class sprinter. Talk about yeah, your no. world records and stuff. No. We talked about we're not going to talk about me. All right. <laughs> okay right. Just what I wrote for the card for Mark. <laughs> okay. Right. But 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 the the key is I think what we've all found is that you go out and there's just this broad array of advice, and and it becomes a little bit of experimentation. I mean there's there's some medical like okay we know specifically what to do. But day-to-day living, mm-hmm. I think what we're saying, you can live with it. Mm-hmm. And it is a condition, though. And it's something to be aware of. And, like, I, did, I didn't know. I, first, I'd even thought about caffeine being such a trigger. Oh, yeah. Because I'm over-caffeinated. And, and yeah. that might be something that people are sitting there reading or listening to this and saying, maybe, you know, gosh, I didn't realize. I'm in my 60s or 70s, and, and I want to have a, you know, go gentle into the night, but I don't want to have this mm-hmm. as an issue. Right. And and so I, I guess, I mean, we'll have a variety of resources in the show notes for everyone, but I think the key is, you know, you just, you get a baseline, you understand what triggers it, and then write that stuff down. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. really that's good, good advice. And this, this device, actually, yeah, the research that I've done, a lot of them have mentioned it's an Apple Watch, I yeah. guess, or yeah. an, an iWatch or something. Apple Watch, yeah. Apple Watch, mm-hmm. but it does... I mean, it's a useful tool. They, I mean, yeah. they laughed at it when it first came out, mm-hmm. and now my uh, my doctor's like, "No, this is this is the good real stuff." Deal. I mean, they've really come a long ways. And I, I don't know and anything about those little the little portable yep. EKG or ECG devices, or e, you know, are those yep. the real deal? Or well, I don't I don't think so. You know, when they take an EKG, they put twelve leads on right. you, and, right. which is looking at your heart from different directions, mm-hmm. and then they can kind of see things. Those little things they call them, an, you know, ECG monitor, EKG, and they say it can tell what your heart rate is, and your rhythm. It's like, well, you can tell what your heart rate is. Right. Mm-hmm. You can right. tell what the rhythm is. You don't need a, you know, an expensive. I always kind of think uh, that's kind of seems like it's a little bit mm-hmm. not mis- necessary. misleading. It's not like a medical-grade EKG that they can say, right. oh, you've got right bundle branch block on this little tracing, right. and, and we're gonna, this is what we're going to do, or mm-hmm. you have you know, su- a supraventricular tachycardia or something like that. You know, you need to see your doctor about right. that, and, and don't follow our boneheaded Well, uh, yeah, and, and if you are experiencing any of these symptoms or you're concerned, yeah. I mean, see your doctor, right? Yeah. I mean, we're not suggesting that you try these right. remedies, right. but there are a number of things that once you've ha- had this diagnosis or, you, you know, there are things that you will adaptively find. I mean, when I was first going through this, um, I have a good friend, Scott Shermer. He's a cardiologist. Uh, he was at UNMC here in Omaha at the time, and while he didn't treat me in the ER, I went to him afterwards, and he was like, you know, Fletch, if you if you notice your heart racing, um, you might be dehydrated. I think dehydration can contribute to this. So, you yeah. know, Dave and I have, we were chugging Gatorades or something if we were, you know, 
and just give it a little time. Maybe that's a vagus nerve thing. Maybe it's a- electrolyte thing, an yeah. electrolyte imbalance. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we drink. Um, we've talked about this. I drink a little salt water. Mm-hmm. You know that LMNT, the electrolyte drinks. Yep. But I'm sure that you can overdo those and throw your electrolytes out of balance the opposite way. Yeah. So I don't. Again, I'm not. Yeah. Recommending anything, but maybe no, it these, is dehydration. These are, are great. I just did it here, and it says I'm in sinus rhythm. I've got a 66. Uh, beats per minute. Uh, this ECG does not show signs of a- AFib. Um, it can't check for heart attack. Blah 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 blah. But it's a it's a one indicator. That's it. You know, and it, and it leads to other things. Mm-hmm. That uh, I was amazed the first time that I had an, an AFib that uh, the cardiologist said, "Send me all this stuff. I just want to see the pattern." You know, and then we'll do the EKG, and mm-hmm. then we'll do. The, other the deep dive into it. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And yeah, so, interesting. Uh, it's a tool. Well, you basically. have a cardiologist? Do you see a cardiologist? I don't have a doctor. You don't have a doctor at all? Dr. Heal that. You have a cardiologist. I well, have a cardiologist. My cardiologist, I don't know if you, in the paper, but Dr. Lataha, he was riding his bike out west and got oh, yeah. hit and killed. Oh, my God. That mm-hmm. was my cardiologist. And I was devastated for a week because this was my guy. I yeah. live in Denver. And I would drive back once a year to see this guy. He's the wow. one that did my ablation, and I trusted him wow. with all things heart. Mm-hmm. And he was just a great guy and so bright. Yeah. So um, after that happened, I was without. Yeah. I have found a guy in Denver. I actually have an appointment on July 2nd. Mm-hmm. I, but I was looking for an EP, an electrophysiologist, because I know – my issue is with the wiring in my sure, heart. Sure, sure. Um, I've had echoes done and EKGs, and I don't think I have any valve issues All of those or are fine, yeah. So I'm going to see this guy in July, and he, I mean, he's kind of the guy as far as yep. these SVT ablations, or there was like a sinus something ablation that he has done. Hmm. So I just want to see the guy yeah. mm-hmm. because – I don't know that it impacts my lifestyle, but I'm always thinking about it. It's confidence. Yeah. Exactly. So I just, if I can get another ablation and fix this, I'll do it that day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just, you know, don't Doug and I used to go it. ride our bikes a ton, and I'm always just in the back of my mind thinking, you know, what if I'm 20 miles from home, yeah. right. and all of a sudden I go into tachycardia? And, you know, Lataha, when I had talked to him about it, had told me, you know, it's, it's probably not going to kill you. You know, again... Mm-hmm. This is just, mm-hmm. and everything I've read, but super annoying. I mean, you know, when your heart's beating yes. in the 140s for some period of time, it's like you're, you know, sprinting for a yep. long time. So it kind of wipes you out. So, I mean, I want to get back to the stuff that I really enjoy yeah. doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to get this behind me mm-hmm. so I can do that. It's about longevity. And we just all want that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you I don't think you shouldn't your panic about it. I, I wouldn't, because any situation you're in, if it, if it stays, you know, you're smart enough to, well, I need to go see somebody because they'll give you a medication to control your rate right. immediately. So it's not like you have to live in fear and not do things about it. You know, I would, but right. again, learn your triggers. If sprinting makes you worse or if working out, mm-hmm. if doing bench press, heavy bench press stimulates it, then, you know, you got to kind of work around. Mm-hmm. Just like anything right. we do now right. as older guys, right. you're constantly injured, right. you're always working around, That's it. changing you're your right. workout to do something else. And you got to expect, expect it. And, you know, because some of these treatments are not a cure-all for atrial fib. It's like when we see people that have their, their ears ring, it's like, okay, well, you don't really have a lot. It's not going to, you know. Yeah. And so they can treat it successfully in a lot of cases, but not always. Sure. So you kind of be dealing with it. And so I just, like, add that to your list of right. things that, right. you know, and like a huge you can't thing do for anymore. Me, yeah. Do, do. Yeah. yeah. A huge thing for me will just be, just tell me that I'm going to be fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can read Google all day long. Yeah. But I think part of my problem is when I go into this tachycardia, then I start thinking, all right, get out of this, get out of this, yeah. get out of this, which makes it worse. So Yeah, that stress contri- contribution. Absolutely. Might, so mm-hmm. I just you know, want this guy to say, yep, this is what you've got, and this is what you can try to do, or this is what we can do. Yeah. But I think the only catastrophe is a blood clot. And so you don't want to stay in atrial fib because then you do your risk of having a clot. It starts to go up. Right. And the longer it's there, well, it's like you need to deal with that like, you, like you're doing. And then is, is there a risk to being on blood thinners for too long? Um, I'd have to relay that. You know, I'd talk to your internist. Yeah. Or, but, I was but, curious because, you know, sometimes they say take a baby aspirin. Yeah. 
Did and you I guys take one every day. Um, I have taken aspirin on and off over okay. the last 15 years or so. No, no. okay. I do. Yeah. I chew up a baby. I mean, usually I run out and then forget about them for six months and then think, oh, maybe I need to, you know, so then yeah. I'll, I take them yeah, again so or something. You can't I, run out of baby aspirin. Yeah. There's 700 in the bottle. <laughs> right. There's a bottle. Well, I just chew them up by the handful. I'm not, I'm not, not a moderation guy. Really. Cover yourself for the week. That's right. <laughs> just eat yeah. seven they're, like, see, they're like $3, and there's at least <laughs> 7,000 in them. In the right. bottle. It's impossible. It's like Blistex. You can I, never I am, run out of it. But I do... I will. I, I do drink alcohol. I try to limit my alcohol. That was something Shermer suggested. Limit it. Two drinks, Fletch. No more than two drinks. And so that's something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you just get bigger containers, unfortunately. But that's something that I've tried to adopt, and I've tried to limit my caffeine. I still drink caffeine. I do know that overeating, which is something that I do a lot, unfortunately, but that is one of my triggers. Mm. Whatever that does to me uh, i'm just a habitual overeater and so i've really struggled with that 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 is probably my biggest trigger i do a lot of breathing stuff i mm-hmm. do a lot of controlled breathing techniques if i feel funky like something's happening i will sit down and do some controlled breathing i do some of those vagus nerve manipulations yeah. you know there are a number of different things that you can try to do to reset your vagus nerve yeah. Splash water on your face. Cold water right on now. your face. Yeah. You know, you like you're like uh, having a bowel movement, you know, that yeah. contraction or something. And I do the one where you, I know this is freaking you out, man. The one where you look way over I the do side. the one where I oh, take yeah. my eyes yeah. way over yeah. here and I will, then it makes yeah. you yawn or something. Yeah. Interesting. And I reset my vagus nerve that way pretty regularly. So that's been your trick because I mean I know we've been huh. so proud of how far these guys have come oh. from high school. <laughs> yes. I mean, with, yes, we with, have. With the. Uh, you know, I mean, it's to the point where, you know, with what Doug's accomplished. And then, right. you know, Mark was always, you know, with the always in trouble with the authorities. Well, and right. That's sure. what we, he's become an author, you know, an <laughs> author and an authority now. Way, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you're looking way over here, is it hard to get the fork into the three pounds of mashed potatoes <laughs> right. if you're not seeing them? Well, see, that's the whole point. If I if I look way over there, then I don't get you stick the potatoes <laughs> into your big cheek. enough bites. Oh, my God. Yeah, do, man. Do you so. guys uh, uh, meditate? You ever tried meditating? I have tried. Uh, I, I just think it's something meditation. our generation either laughs at or doesn't do or yeah. tries mm-hmm. to do, but the monkey brain kicks in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just wonder if if that's that's something because I, I I'd run across a couple of things like, look, we all just need to calm down, and meditation is the way to do it. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. I I've tried it and. Four seconds into it. Yeah. I'm I have like, a hard time okay. not thinking. Or you start thinking about don't think about anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're thinking. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I, you know, I try to do in the morning, I get up early. Since I'm in Denver, mountain time, but I work for an Omaha company still, I start work pretty early to try to align to central mm-hmm. time. But mm-hmm. up until this week, I try to get up every morning and do 30 minutes on the Peloton and 30 minutes of yoga Hmm. every morning. Very good. And that kind of, I mean, I'm not flexible at all. I can barely bend over and touch my knees, Mm -hmm. but it's the breathing aspect. I think it calms me. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Um, Just, I mean, I'm trying everything I can to be heart healthy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, You're a morning exercise guy. mm -hmm. Morning exercise. Are you a morning exerciser? Are you going to buy the car like he's got the... I already got one. He's got the Easy hatchback. <laughs> He's got one of those. He's in, you're doing yoga now. You're driving hatchback. <laughs> right. And you're, right. right. I'm super the man bun is next. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, right. Just absolute pine cone eater. <laughs> That's right. No, man. I, 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 um, I do a little bit of, I'm not sure it's meditation. My friend Andrew Huberman, if, I don't know if you listen to Huberman occasionally on the YouTube or the podcast stuff, but I have started doing that um, – he doesn't describe it as meditation necessarily, but he talks about, you know, calming your body. So, you know, finding a relaxed position, seated or laying or something. And while you don't shut your mind off, he just, you know, relax your body, focus on your breathing, 10 minutes of that. I do it more because I don't sleep extremely well, and I know sleep is really critical. And so he is suggesting that this practice of calm body you know, let your mind do what it, your mind does, but control your breathing and focus on that is 
beneficial to maybe not getting that full night of restful sleep that you would like. So that's, that's a whole other topic is, is really sleeping. Is. sleeping. And, so I'm trying to add yeah. that into my routine, and I, and I like it. I, I focus on my breathing. I can do that for a little while, but I've tried the meditation. I've tried guided meditation where Sam Harris is, feel your feet against yeah. the floor. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> who the hell is that? You know, Stop I mean, talking. That's right. So I, I don't meditate particularly well either, man. No. no I, I, but it's something. It, it is. I, there's, there's people that they absolutely it. swear by it. And absolutely. And they say it's controlled you know, my anxiety. It's, a, it's controlled my outlook. I'm way more positive and all of this. Right. I, I just think it's, it's a generational thing that really is a behavioral change for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I have not succeeded. At, it, at all but man. you do but so many other mean. things you do a lot of things really well though man i mean you are consistently doing the sauna the cold plunge the exercise i mean yeah, i try to you I do a lot to. of things just because well. it makes me feel good i tried meditating in the sauna this morning and, just, <laughs> and almost drowned <laughs> or what, what, what yeah. well no what that, then i went into the cold plunge. <laughs> you know the, the funny thing and, and john get your thoughts on this too is the uh, the cold plunge impact on on the heart Right. You know, because I'm in, I, I go from exercise to the sauna. I, I would not do that. No. And that, that would freak you out. I would not. No, that would I, I, I'll, flip you in. I, you'll have an immediate, I, I think, that it's called the diving reflex. Yeah. If you go into cold water, it immediately can change your heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I would never do that because I, I, I'd, go, I'd go right into it. You'd go into it. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, my, I mean, my heart rate out of the sauna is in the mid 80s to low 90s, you know, so you're relaxed. Yeah. But it's that fight or flight of hitting the yeah, – because right. it's 56-degree water. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so your heart rate goes like this. Yeah. And then it gets down into the mid-40s. Yeah. It's After you've bizarre. adjusted to the cold? Yeah. It's two minutes of hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get into this euphoria. Mm-hmm. Do you wear the watch when you do that? Or are yeah. you able to wear the yeah, – so yeah. you can I mean, actually – yeah, and then see what's happening I think, to your heart? I, I don't know the medical reasoning behind it, but it's sort of like – there's that initial like I'm going to protect yeah. everything, and then all of a sudden, you just feel this calm. Wow. Yeah, I do you see a white light or anything? Like, is there? <laughs> is there what? Do you see white light at the end of that forty when you're down at forty? No, the per Care Bears are always there okay. talking to me. <laughs> okay. I just have a, hallucinations. No, it's just okay. yeah, it's. But I just wonder if I'm if I'm doing way too much, you know, and and expecting too That's much out of this because you know i would having, ask your cardiologist i yeah. would go through your routine and see what yeah. he or yeah. she thinks yeah. I, i'd be careful about about that but yeah. you know caffeine and jumping in cold water and <laughs> i could see what my heart was doing because i'd see it through my chest <laughs> yeah. i wouldn't need yeah. to watch <laughs> right. but i no think doubt, there are man. you know the, the more you read like you guys are very well read and so you know you take everything with a grain of salt certainly you can always bounce it off your doctor but um you know there's so, so many areas that you know we don't know everything either yeah mm-hmm. and so but I think that jumping in cold water would be a little bit risky for if you have heart mm-hmm. rhythm issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. If I jumped into car- cold water with like a triple cheeseburger or something, yeah. probably that <laughs> yeah. would set me off. Well, I, I do think that the interesting thing about as we get older is is you don't care about people's opinion as much. Right. True. And I don't yeah. really know, you know, and so I'm not afraid to do my own workout. Right. No matter how stupid it looks. And it's like, okay, look, mm-hmm. I can't bench press like that anymore. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm going to do this and. Do my own thing and experimenting with things. I think that's what makes it so much fun. As you're yep. going through this journey of mm-hmm. life, it's like okay, I'm going to try to make, I'm going to try to make next year better. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm slowly aging and things are going downhill, but I'm going to continue to try to do things I want to do and just practice those things. You have to be somewhat adaptive, hit, right? Yeah, and you're going to yeah. hit so many hurdles in that you know it's like oh shoot, my neck or mm-hmm. you know my back or my elbow or right. you know my Achilles tendon. You yeah. know. So now I'm going to be switching to doing this now. I was like, now I'm going to go back to swimming for three months, you know, mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Those, that's so a great trying comment, to John. work around these things to get, mm-hmm. because it just get used to it. You know, we're all heading the same, we're all going to end up in the same place. And so just keep trying to get to the no better doubt. place because you're, you want to be a tool for the people you love. Right. And so it's like, all right, let's keep this tool working. That's a great, yeah. that's a great description right. of it, man. It Thank you for that. Yeah. Exactly. Because Mark says that all the time. We want to live a quality life. We want to enjoy our family and our friends and those things. You want to be in a good enough shape mentally and physically to enjoy those things. You've got grandkids now, and so we want to be there for that. And so I think, you know, curiosity and a willingness to try different things and adapt is really critical to that. Advocate for yourself because a lot of these treatments that they might prescribe, they just treated someone who's 250 pounds overweight, you know, and has had heart issues and their whole family's had heart issues. And and so they're – 
they're saying, well, this is what you're going to do because that what that's what works for the middle 20% of the whole population. And you're kind of out here. Yeah. Saying, well, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I hear you. I'll factor all of that in. But, you know, I think with a lot of medicine, you just have to, to say, okay, I get it, but let me understand the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. What else is out there that I, I could do? There's a lot that goes into it. It's a fascinating thing. And yep. if you're struggling with this or you, you suspect you may be experiencing this from time to time, obviously – Take everything that we've said with a grain of salt. These are just our personal experiences and what we are doing to try to get, you know, that going down that road as you've described it. Talk to professionals. uh, Educate yourself to the extent that you can. And, um, you know, I mean, I think that's the best we can do. I think the key is you can live a a quality life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not one of those things like, well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, You don't have to. Don't give up. Yeah. I bumped into some dude the other day. I was visiting a new client, and it's interesting. The guy that I was walking around with is a big, you know, he's a grown man. He's in his 50s probably, big, strong-looking guy, and we just we kind of started talking about, you know, what, you know, and he was a, used to wrestle at UNO apparently and obviously stays in shape, and, you know, our, our f- parting comment was just, you know, keep fighting back, you know, don't, don't give in, right. don't succumb, just – Keep doing it. Keep up the fight. It right? wasn't gravy, was it? <laughs> it was not big gravy. <laughs> okay. No, no. The gravy probably. I don't. I haven't spoken with him for a while, but he may have a heart issue or two at five bills. <laughs> I so. do think it's a fun project. It is uh, a fun which, project. It's like, all right, I'm going to see, just like I hadn't run for a long time, and so I got back on the treadmill to see, like, oh, okay, what can I run a mile in? And it was way worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I really can't. But then within, I thought, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to make this get better. I'm going to kind of start working on this. And then it's just so much fun to watch. It's like, okay, I don't feel that bad now. I can speed it up a little bit huh. and just watching it happen, you know, but then some injury will come along. You know, mm-hmm. I totally switch to something else. So you do something right. else. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, this is kind of fun. I'm going to start doing this again now yeah. Yeah. and then watch it. But, but it is, it's such a slow process, yeah. but that's kind of the part you have to get used to. It's yeah. like, all right, this is going to take a month before I notice anything, but just like keep at it. Yeah, keep right. that's great. Yeah. That's good that's advice. Excellent. And you can run a mile. Is that <laughs> Did you put it on pause to come here? You started yeah. yesterday. Yeah. I'm going to finish up later today. Uh, yeah. But the Peloton's been great for that. I mean, they have so many different workouts. They do. It's uh, on and off the bike. Absolutely. And we use the Peloton app for yoga. Yeah, yeah. And they uh, have beginner, intermediate, advanced. Obviously, yeah. we're in beginner. Yeah. Um, and they do. They have weight training and you know stretching and yeah. flexibility and foam rolling yeah. and you know we got it for the bike but it has so much more and it just when you turn it on the tv it yeah. kind of kind of motivates you i'm gonna get on the floor and do this mm-hmm. stretching yeah. and, and you can do it 10 minutes you can do it absolutely two hours. You yeah, see, actually dave is sitting cross-legged here now <laughs> right it's, it's, yes it's, it's, he's, he's a beginner sitting, but not even on I'm the floor hovering. next yeah, year right. he'll be back on the show with a man bun and <laughs> <you know? laughs> right. He'll be the Will you have me back? <laughs> uh, absolutely, <laughs> man. We should, yeah, we should catch back up. And uh, what's the saying? Namaste. Or... Namaste. 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 Holy Namaste. Yeah. Come on. Are you kidding oh, me? We'll talk when we're done. Uh, here. Now right. let's get all back right. to the junior high basketball. That's really what we've all come here to talk about. <laughs> yeah, Isn't Valley it? View won that game eight to six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. I just, I just remember the contrast between these two basketball players here. Now, Dave could basically do any dunk you could, you could imagine. Doug could hit the net with anger. <laughs> but right, right. Very, oh, he I want to hear more about winning a game in junior high because at the Brook, we didn't win it. We went O for whatever game, number of uh, games we played it. O for my ninth grade year. Yeah, no doubt. Man. Well, I mean, youth sports is something we're going to probably talk about. I'd too, love to talk as, about youth you know, sports. In our 60s, uh, you, you know, you listen to people now and say, you know, God, we're just, uh, we're, we're just going to t- uh, Tucson for a tournament, and then we're going to take our kids over here to Oklahoma mm-hmm. City and – and uh, how old your kid? Nine. And, uh, and, and <laughs> well, we were growing up, we were going to three games. Yeah. Hillside Little League Park. Put your or, glove over your handlebars. Exactly. Yeah. Parents didn't go, didn't go right. to the play-in. You just right. ride your bike to the game. Yeah, let us know how you did, honey. <laughs> Play the game. I, I found a, uh, a picture of our, um, I think I was sixth grade, maybe se- seventh grade, uh, and our, our summer team, the Cubs, uh, at uh, Sunset. Sure. Remember where the Sunset oh, yeah. Field was? Rode my bike with my glove. God, you pray to God that the coach brought the bats. You know, right. the bag of bats. The bag of bats. Right. Shh, shut up. Here they are. And uh, our record that year was four and two. Not yeah. bad, right. man. Yeah, for the whole summer. You played six games six over the games. summer. All summer, as opposed to the hundred and six that they play now yeah. usually. Yeah. yeah. 
It is amazing. That would be a great conversation for all of us because one of the greatest yeah. le- lessons I ever learned was I was at a game with my brother Dave. We're watching, and I'm, of course, yelling at my kid and criticizing my kid, and Dave looks at me and goes, I don't remember you being all that good. <laughs> and I was like, uh, immediately like, wow, that, that was something I needed to hear. That is, isn't it crazy how if you've been through youth sports with mm-hmm. your kids, As you know, we all have. how irrational your totally rational friends yeah. can get over youth sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It yeah. was probably the, one of the best messages that I've ever been given was to, you know, reel it back in a little bit, tough yeah. guy. Yeah. I know. watched you throw lots of guys out <laughs> stealing center field. Yeah, right. So <laughs> That's right, man. Hey, man, I would come up firing, and Jim oh. Hilsendigger would duck out in center field yeah. because the ball was flying to the oh. fence, man. <laughs> That's like you and <laughs> he played first base on our team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You always had to have the big first baseman's glove. Oh, that's, and, and you so could barely we, lift it. We had a we had a kid on the team that was left hander, through smoke as a young person. Yeah, had a great curveball. You know, had a had a fastball that would tail off things like that. And it was it was a nightmare because if someone was on base, Hayesburg would be on base. He'd he'd you know he'd whip it to over. He's a left hander. He'd whip it over first base, and then it'd be like some knuckleball coming. And so Hayesburg would always laugh how when he's when he'd make the move to first, Hayesburg would just start running toward the fence to go get the ball. <laughs> You're gonna beat it there. And oh, he would my. yell at me. Yeah, the pitcher yeah. during the game. Hayesburg, God. Yeah. <laughs> and the Come ball, on. Yeah, the skip into the fence. <laughs> oh my God. Automatic third base. Those are so funny. Those yeah. those are wonderful stories. That's a whole uh, other visit. Yeah. That's a whole other one. But yeah, the adult the sports thing is really an amazing one. But I love this conversation, good, and guys. I'm so glad you guys could come and join us, man. Thank this you. is there are people that are going to listen to this that think I, mean, I probably need to get some information about I figure this. Figure this out. Yeah. 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 So there's, I appreciate it's, it. it's more common, and there's lots of stuff available, and and you you absolutely can get through it yeah. and live with it. Yeah. Sure. You know, no yeah. I mean, it's it's cool. No doubt. To, yeah. to, There's to, a lot to of stuff online. Always skip down past the ones that say sponsor. Sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Get down to one that's more like a, a white paper. Right. Page yeah. two. Yeah. Usually that's where the actual yeah, information down. is found. Yeah. YouTube. Uh, we've got a couple. And um, I think I might have sent it to you guys to take a look yeah. at. Mm-hmm. We'll post the that link. up there. We you know, just because the, the guy had a coat on and a stethoscope, mm-hmm. I was like, well. Right. <laughs> he must know what Halloween he's party? Must be a doctor. Right. Got to be legit. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but it's it's helpful anyway. Yeah. So, thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Yes, thanks for having this us. Is wonderful. Have a great we'll weekend, everybody. Yeah. Uh, we will be back in two weeks with yep. another episode. All right. Let yeah. us know. Send us some comments. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye.